Welcome to Rogue Football. I'm your host, Jordan DeLugo. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Right now, we have got our Indianapolis Colts 2024 seven-round mock draft. Big Jaguars guy here down here in Jacksonville, so obviously pains me a little bit to try to help improve the Colts throughout this NFL draft process, but got to do it. I really respect their current direction with what they have going on within their football operations. You know, Chris Ballard, he's not a guy that takes a ton of huge swings in free agency. He's calculated, likes to get athletic players in the draft, build through the draft, keep his own. That's what they did a lot this offseason. Shane Steichen, as your offensive mastermind and head coach. And then, of course, Gus Bradley still over there on the defensive side of the ball. I Like I said, I respect what they've been doing um, in Indianapolis. Uh, you know, ownership aside, right? I think that this football team has a lot good going on. Uh, and obviously, Anthony Richardson coming back from injury, you're expecting him to be fully healthy. You're expecting him to be able to go out there and be the star he looked like he was becoming very early on for the Colts in his rookie year. But you do have Joe Flacco, right, as a backup plan in case anything goes awry with injury, what have you. So I think that you have a quarterback in place behind Richardson that even if there's an injury, you have an op- opportunity to continue to compete at a high level. And I think this Colts team is ready to compete throughout the 2024 campaign and give teams a lot of trouble. I like the balance they have on both sides of the ball. You look at their needs, I think you could go get another cornerback still. I know that that's been extremely commonly mocked to them in the first round. You picked up Juju Brents, obviously. You've had some issues with having to release cornerbacks due to off-field situations. Dallas Flowers last year started to look like he was really going to have a tremendous season, only to suffer an Achilles injury a few weeks into the year. So, you know, yeah, you, you expect him back, but is he going to be the same player? I'm not exactly sure. So I do think you need a cornerback. I think you could use a right guard. You know, Will Fries, he's fine. I don't think he's like prohibitive to you playing good football, but could you upgrade that spot? Certainly. I think you need more weapons on the offensive side of the ball. Love bringing back Michael Pittman Jr. I'm a huge, huge Josh Downs fan. I like their running back room, right? But you can always add more weapons. They still have about $17 million in cap space, just a little under $17 million in cap space, according to overthecap.com. So you could address some needs in the second and third wave of free agency, right? Uh, And kind of avoid having to feel pigeonholed in the draft, which I don't think they have to feel pigeonholed with their current roster. I do think, like I said, they're primed to play good football in 2024 and compete in the AFC South, which is exactly what they did in year one under Shane Steichen, despite not having Anthony Richardson for most of the year. With a healthy Anthony Richardson and this draft hall that we're going to try to bring in here, and the moves they've made in free agency this offseason, like I said, I think that the Texans are going to be the team that gets all the hype in the AFC South this offseason, and you know, rightfully so to a certain extent. That is a exciting young organization with a lot of great pieces. you got the quarterback in place, the head coach, who's a defensive-minded head coach. Um, I think that they are certainly moving in the right direction. I think the Jaguars have an opportunity to bounce back in a big way, but I think the Colts are right there. I don't think they get enough publicity. I think that the type of draft I'm about to land for them is going to it's going to make it really tough for the Jaguars, for the Texans, and obviously the Tennessee Titans who are kind of looming in the background as well. They just had a big time spending spree in free agency. We'll see how that plays out for them. They're trying to figure out if Will Levis is the guy. I think the Colts feel like they know Anthony Richardson's the guy, and we're going to surround him with some talent here. So at 15 overall, the Colts' first pick, you could try to trade up, trade down, whatever. I'm fine with sticking and picking because the way the the mock drafts have kind of been going a lot lately, Brock Bowers has been falling into the mid-teens. And if he falls to 15 for the Indianapolis Colts, I love the fit because this is not just a tight end. This is an offensive weapon. You can literally line him up anywhere in this offense. Shane Steichen is a brilliant offensive play caller. You have Anthony Richardson. You have some receivers you really like in Pittman Jr. Downs. You still have Alec Pierce, some other guys as well. The offensive line looks pretty good, right? The running game looks pretty good, right? How about you add Brock Bowers to make this offense complete? He can be the offensive engine. He can be the go-to receiver, the guy that you're getting the ball 10-plus times a game. 
You can line him up in the backfield. You can line him up at H back. You can line him up at tight end. You can line him up in the slot. You can line him up even out wide and have him motion all over the formation. He is going to cause matchup nightmares because he is too fast for a linebacker to cover. And he is too big for safeties to keep up with, right? He's too athletic. And it's not just about the athleticism. This guy went out and dominated at Georgia in the SEC at 18 years old, and that's all he did the rest of his career. He's got tremendous ball skills, good wiggle at the top of his routes, right? Uh, So I just think that, and he's a yak, unbelievable yak threat. I think that this would be a perfect fit for the Colts. Is it the biggest need in the world? No, it's not the biggest need, uh, but would it potentially set this offense on a trajectory that could really change the way things are looking within the AFC South and the AFC in general? I think so. And then at 46 overall, I went with FSU defensive lineman Braden Fisk. No, this guy's not the longest, doesn't have the longest arms, but a RAS freak. And again, the Colts always go for these athletic guys. Braden Fisk is as athletic as they come on the interior. When you look at what he did at the Combine, had a fantastic senior bowl week as well, had a fantastic year at FSU was one of the linchpins of that defense. And you talk about juicing up the interior even more. Like DeForest Buckner, great player. You brought back Grover Stewart, who is a super stout run defender. Gives you a little bit of pass rush juice. You also brought in Raekwon Davis, obviously. You drafted Adebare recently. But to me, Braden Fisk is instantly your second best interior pass rusher. Instantly behind DeForest Buckner and a guy who in this passing league in this division, which they're good running teams in this division. But now you have the Jaguars who are a pass first offense. You have the Texans who have CJ Stroud. They're going to be throwing the ball all over the yard, even though they are a Shanahan style team. They're still going to be throwing the ball a lot. And the Titans now they have DeAndre Hopkins and Calvin Ridley. Will Levis throwing them the football You've got to be able to get to the quarterback. You've got to be able to impact the backfield. And Braden Fisk can do that at a high level. Has a nonstop energy out on the football field. Explosive off the line. Can really get into the quarterback's lap in a flash. So I love that. And again, is that your biggest need? No. But you're trying to create dominance in certain rooms. And I think bringing in a Brock Bowers and bringing in a Braden Fisk Really helps you out in that regard. At 82 overall, we do finally go cornerback where there's a need. To me, Cam Hart makes a lot of sense for them. He, to me, is not a man-to-man cover corner because he doesn't have the hip fluidity, the quickness. But you talk about this Gus Bradley cover three scheme. I think Cam Hart makes a lot of sense in that regard. He's physical. He's tough. He's got the size to play outside in that that type of scheme and disrupt at the catch point. Uh, you know, just keep everything in front of him. Use his eyes, which he does a good job of, uh, at his uh, on his tape at Notre Dame. So I think Cam Hart makes a lot of sense for them at that point. At one seventeen, Kansas offensive lineman Dominic Pooney, um, very good athlete. Didn't have the best forty time, but you look at the rest of the athletic traits. Very good, uh, you know, very agile, very explosive, and a guy who on tape and at the Senior Bowl, just dominant, you know, very good hands, aggressive hands. He can mirror movements. He played tackle this past year at Kansas. He can also play guard. I think he can also play center. So when I'm talking about plugging in a Dominic Pooney here in the fourth round, which to me, he should be off the board in the second, no doubt about it. But this is a deep offensive line group. He's not got like the sexiest traits necessarily again like a five uh five three forty yard dash not the biggest not the most imposing not the freakiest guy out there but he gets the job done at such a high level and he does have the necessary athleticism and the necessary length to get the job done for the Indianapolis Colts I think you plug him in to compete with Will Fries and I think he probably beats him out in year one I think he's that good and he can be a versatile Uh, swing player for you throughout his career I think he should be a starter but if there's an injury that happens you can plug him in somewhere and plug someone else in like he gives you the versatility to be able to handle situations because I think he can be a five position flex player in the NFL at 151 overall Louisville wide receiver Jamari Thrash I think Thrash is an excellent route runner and I think he gives you a little bit of what you don't have right now I think Josh Downs is an awesome slot player Michael Pittman kind of that big bodied X receiver. You do have Alec Pierce, who's a deep threat, but not the most fluid, not the most flexible 
receiver in the world. I think Jamari Thrash gives you plenty of that. He's got decent size. Like he's not a tiny guy. I think that he can go out there and be a move Z type of player for you, run really good routes, get open at a high level and just present targets for Anthony Richardson. And I think he could be, you know, if he's your, now you have Brock Bowers as well, right? If he's your fourth option in a passing offense, I think you feel really, really good about that moving forward. This is a loaded wide receiver class, and so there's going to be players that fall down the board that shouldn't, and I think Jamari Thrash might be one of those guys. So we'll see how it plays out there, but make no mistake about it. There will be a quality receiver on the board at 151 overall. At 191, this is just a value, and I think the safety class in general has kind of been overlooked by a lot of people. We'll see if the NFL feels the same way, but to me, Maryland safety, Bo Braid, at this spot, you know, I have a day two grade on him, would be tremendous value. He's the type of guy that can be a Swiss Army knife for your defense. He can play strong safety in the box. He can play deep safety. He has the speed to, you know, play free safety in a cover three defense, in my opinion. Uh, he, he does it all, and he makes plays on the football. He can hit. He can run. I love Bo Braid. I love what he would bring to the Indianapolis Colts. And again, doesn't necessarily have to be a starter year one. They have some guys they like, right? Uh, but I think Bo Braid could come in certainly and help out another former Maryland ter- Terrapin and, and Nick Cross. And so I think that eventual starter, but probably in year one, a type of guy that can just be a, a rotational piece, a guy that comes in in certain packages, certain situations where you want to use his skill set, which is a varied skill set at 234 overall cornerback DeAndre Prince. I think the Colts, again, they could just use more and more at that cornerback position. Prince has got pretty good length, pretty good size overall. He's very physical. So I think, you know, these cover three corners that have to come, come downhill and hit, he can do that, but he can run. I mean, this is a four, three, 40 yard dash type of guy, a very good athlete that I think at this point has just been overlooked in the NFL. In, the, in this NFL draft class, I think that the Colts had a 30 visit with him, if I'm not mistaken. So I think he makes a lot of sense for them at this point. I don't think he'll actually make it to the se- seventh round. He certainly shouldn't. But similar to the wide receiver class, this cornerback is very deep. Not as deep as the wide receiver class, because I think this is a potentially historic class at wide receiver. But there are a ton of good corners that are kind of going under the radar right now, at least when it comes to NFL draft media. And to me, DeAndre Prince is one of them out of Ole Miss, a guy that can absolutely fly. And he doesn't have the quickest feet or or the most fluid hips. But again, in this cover three scheme, I think he makes a lot of sense for them. Man to man, I think he can get the job done because he has makeup speed, because he has the size. And he's not like stiff per se, but he's a little bit leggy. Long legs make it a little bit harder to transition. Uh, But I think DeAndre Prince makes a lot of sense for the Indianapolis Colts there. That'll do it here for this mock draft. Uh, If you're a Colts fan, would love to know what you think. Please drop a comment in the comment section below. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Y'all have a good one.